Hey you guys, good morning and welcome back to our channel. For those of you that are new or this might be the first video that you've stumbled across, we are currently up in Alaska at our little off-grid cabin that we bought one year ago. We came up for a full week to work on the property, enjoy the property, and also to prep the property for our permanent move up here in just two short months. It's been an amazing week. We have just a few more days left before we have to fly back to Virginia for two months to pack up and finalize things there before we head up to Alaska for good. Today I thought I would just take you guys along with us. We have a lot of work to do on the property, just cleaning up. When we bought the place, the seller left a bunch of uh, garbage and things that, that we just you know need to get rid of really. Thankfully, they did leave some things that came in handy this week that we were up here, just like some camping chairs, uh, they left a big picnic table outside, they left a barbecue grill here. So these were all things that we were able to enjoy the week that we were up here, but a lot of it is garbage and trash that needs to be taken to the dump. So we're gonna be cleaning up, we're going to be cutting down a bunch of trees. Let me show you guys what we got going on out here. So we are gonna be completely off grid out here. We have a solar system. I don't know if you can see this uh, pole mount back here, this black pole mount. We have a complete solar system that we are gonna be putting on the property uh, for power. We'll, we'll be completely off grid, no city power at all. So in order for this mount to get the most sunlight, we are southern facing, which is great, but all of these trees in front of that mount have to go so that they don't block the sun. And then we have a bunch of firewood that was left by the seller that we want to get stacked up under our deck so that it can have an opportunity to dry out before we get here because we arrive in Alaska for good in November and by the time we arrive the snow will already be on the ground for seven months or so. So we want to get all of this wood stacked up so that maybe it'll be dry enough that we can use it when we get here. This is the kind of stuff like they just left a bunch of garbage and junk some chairs that have holes in them, frisbees, I mean, just garbage, you know. But the, this wood pile here, we want to get this all stacked up underneath the porch, which is the only place we have right now that will keep it dry. It's heavy, huh? All right, let's go. Watch it, watch it. Go, go this way. So this is just an eight by 12 shed that we purchased and had put on the property because right now the only structure out here is the cabin itself. So this is housing all of our solar equipment that we purchased and the company that we're working with will be coming out next month to install everything before we move out here for good. So I thought really quick I would give you guys just a little tour of kind of the cabin, the outside of the cabin, and our thoughts on where we're thinking about putting some things when we get here. Those of you that know us know we're big time gardeners. We're gonna be raising chickens all the things that we normally do on the homestead, but we're gonna have to build up structures because there's nothing here right now. So when you come into our property, we've got a pretty long driveway. And then we have a bluff over here on the side. If we do decide to get another dairy cow, um, we're definitely gonna have to purchase hay and stock hay, so we'll have to have some type of a, a hay barn or something to keep it dry because there's nowhere for us to grow our own hay out here. I just don't have the patience for that anyway, so we would buy hay every year and stock it up. I think I would probably put her up here on this bluff. So if you go down the driveway just a little bit, it actually levels out to the bluff, so it's not like this big hill, because I know you're probably thinking, why would you put her up there where you have to trek up this hill? It's not like that, just a little bit further down the driveway, but this whole area back here is ours. So I would probably fence off that area for pasture for her, clear out some trees, put a little shelter in there for her and a little milk barn, because I would want her to be close to the house so that in the middle of winter when I milk her, it's an easy trip 
from the cabin to where she's at. So I'm thinking, thinking tentatively that this might be where I put a dairy cow. So we have 15 acres and this clearing here, all of this belongs to us where the pond is, but this is all basically unusable land because it's muskeg and it's spongy and very wet, obviously. So we're not gonna be using that for anything other than the most beautiful view ever. Um, and maybe, you know, do something fun with that, like a dock coming from right in front of the cabin here, going down with stairs, leading out with like a gazebo or something in the center. So we can enjoy that adorable little pond. But this really is just for a view. We need to clear out all the trees forward of that solar mount to include all of these right here, which will be nice because that'll open up the rest of the clearing so that we have even a bigger view of the pond area. So here's the cabin itself. It's a just under 600 square feet Frisian style cabin. It's got a one bedroom downstairs, one bath, and then upstairs is a loft, which is Parker's little bedroom. Over here to the right of the cabin, it comes down at an incline a little bit, but there's actually a flat area back there that you can't really see that we're thinking about filling in and putting Joe's garage slash shop over on this side of the cabin. Then if you come down here, there's another flat area right about here. And we were thinking that it might be nice to build our greenhouse and our garden right down here. Cause again, I want that close to the cabin as well so that it's easy access for harvesting veggies and stuff for meals. And all these trees right here will be gone, so it'll be great sunlight. The greenhouse should get sunlight all day long whenever the sun is out. But there's already a little path that's been made here by the previous owner. So this would be nice. I can just drive the side-by-side -side or the four-wheeler down to the greenhouse garden area, and uh, it's you know super close to the cabin. So I think that'll work out really well. So the greenhouse is one of our top priorities when we get here our first summer, spring slash summer in Alaska, 2023. We will be building our greenhouse from scratch. You guys probably know we've already built several of those, including like a garden hoop house. I can link those videos if you'd like to check them out. Um, Joe is quite talented at building these greenhouses. So I was just gonna come down here and show you guys really quick behind me. So this is actually a pretty flat area here. So I think that we're gonna clear all this out, bring in some fill dirt, level it out, and put my garden and my greenhouse right here. We're also gonna need a woodshed and a chicken coop. I don't know where we're gonna put those yet, but those are also gonna be fairly close to the house for obvious reasons. In the middle of winter, it gets pretty cold here. Last winter, we had like eight feet of snow out here. So I wanna make sure that the chicken coop is where I can get to it easily and also the woodshed because right now the wood burning stove is the only heat we have in the cabin. So many of you have asked if we are gonna do an addition to the cabin and we just had a contractor friend come in that did all the skirting around the cabin for us and they insulated everything under there. We're thinking about doing an addition to the cabin on this side of the cabin, on the wood side. Probably going from about just past this window here, back. We're gonna take this window out and a door will be put right about here. And this addition that we're gonna build to the cabin is going to be a master closet slash laundry room. Because right now we do not have any closets and we don't have a laundry room. And I'll show you guys when we go inside a tour of the inside and where we're gonna be putting the washer and dryer for now. But we need a laundry room and we need a pantry space because that's something that this cabin doesn't have. And with us preserving and canning for winter uh, and all the things that we do on the homestead, we need a bigger space for food storage. So we will probably come right underneath the roof and have another metal roof coming down off that addition so that we don't have to mess with that at all. But right now that's kind of what we're thinking is doing an addition to the cabin on this side for now. There's a really big four-wheeler trail that starts right about here at the end of the, at the back of the cabin. And it goes all the way around the 15 acres, all the way around the pond, which is gonna be really fun for, you know, little Parker, four-wheeling and stuff like that. There's a lot of flat ground over uh, on the side of this trail, but the problem is I don't wanna have to go for a long walk to get to my greenhouse or get to my chicken coop. So our plan is to really have 
all of the most essential structures as close to the cabin as we can get them. So right now we're putting all of our trash in a pile. We do not have a truck right now because we're just up here visiting. So we just have a rental car, but obviously they don't pick up trash where we're at. We're out in the boonies. So we're gonna have to do a dump run into the nearest town when we get back here for good. So for right now, we're just gonna go ahead and make a dump pile of all the things that we need to take to the dump when we get back. Is that fun? Yeah. You need to have dad clear out these little bushes so you're not hitting them, huh? Yeah, um, I'm good to put in some rocks right here and level it out more. Oh, you want it leveled out? Yeah, because when I try to get a boost, I can't. Just that easy, huh? Yeah. Don't flip over. Okay. You want to tell them, you want to show them your plans for a tree house? Yeah. All right, take us over there. <laughs> Right now, this is where our generator is housed. We do need to make a better generator house. Obviously, the seller that we bought the property from didn't realize the importance of venting the generator <laughs> and it got too hot. So Joe's planning on building a better generator house and then we do have propane. We're probably going to keep this because we bought a like a Toyo heater that we are gonna be putting on the inside of the cabin that'll be connected right here. And that way we can keep the chill off the cabin and then use wood heat as well. Yeah. All right, what you got, P? What's your plan? Okay, so my dad's gonna chop down the sticks off of here. Then I'm gonna make an actual house um, with the roof on it, the door and stuff and a ladder right there. And my dad said that he's gonna make a bridge through here. And if you look over here, you see there's a little cliff down there, so if you fall off, you're dead. Yeah, that's a big cliff, actually. You can't see, but through the bushes. So there's a really big cliff. It goes way down there. So Parker wants Joe to build him a tree house on this tree right here. <laughs> it is a nice straight tree. I like that it's right by the cabin, so if I'm doing dishes or whatever, I can, you know, look out and keep an eye on Parker. But obviously, we'd have to clear all this brush out of here. And the plan is to build a bridge, which Parker's really excited about. Yeah. Build a wood bridge from here over to the tree and then build a circular tree house around that tree trunk or an octagon shape or whatever. But his plan for this tree is a tree house. How fun would that be? Fun. I'm yeah? a little bit high though. So I can climb the ladder and get up there. Oh, so you want to bridge over to it, and then you want to climb the ladder to get up to the... Uh, not too high, though. Just a little bit? Just like maybe up to that branch right there. Do you want windows in it? Yeah, of course. And a door. And a door. And then Dad can clear out some of these trees, and you can have a view to the pond from your tree house. Uh-huh. You know what else that tree house could be used for? What? what? Hunting. A hunting blind. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm going to make that old can load up. That's why. <laughs> Look at your hair. No oh, gel, no gel here in Alaska, Hompy. Huh, no. Nope. El Natural? Yeah. I like it. So here's my rough draft drawing of our homestead plans. Obviously, this is not set in stone. Once we get here for good and we start putting up structures and putting in pasture fencing, that may change. And we're so flexible and fluid with this. But after walking the property this week, this is kind of what Joe and I have in mind. And we're so excited to implement this plan and to take you guys along with us.
that's inevitable whenever we do a video and we're working on a project or something. We get amazing comments and we get some crazy ones too, but I just want to clarify a couple of things. We are well aware that stacking the wood under the porch isn't going to keep it 100% dry. We can put like plastic sheeting under the porch to make sure the rain doesn't fall through the slats of the porch and get the wood wet, but we're not doing all that. Going into town is too far and even though it won't keep the wood completely dry, it's gonna keep it a heck of a lot more dry than it was out here in the open because under the porch is completely dry and it's been raining every day that we've been here. The other thing I wanted to clarify was yes, if you're wondering, I am wearing Uggs, expensive Uggs to work on the property. But these are old Uggs, old Uggs that are ruined that I don't wear out for nice things. So I love them because they keep my feet warm. They're comfortable. It's like wearing slippers all day long. So these particular Uggs, I don't mind getting them dirty. I don't mind getting them wet because they're my used Uggs anyway. So I don't want anybody to be in the comments and be like, oh my God, is she like wearing Uggs out there? I totally am. Wait, yeah, you got it. Full body weight. Full body weight, buddy. Go. Go. Yeah, P. Don't lose the sled. <laughs> Just go right there. Just go right there. I'll help you get it. I can do it. I'm going to get it right here for you. Ready? Careful, P. Oh. Right it's a Good big down. cliff. Don't fall. Oh, are you directing me? Yeah, All right, yep, got it. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, it did. All right, so the property is cleaned up and it looks so much better. All the wood is stacked. We're gonna take a quick break um, and it is starting to rain pretty good. So we're gonna take a quick break and then if it clears up again, we're gonna come out and try to chop down some more of these trees. All right, you guys, so while it's still raining outside, I figured I would take this time to give you a little tour of the cabin. We did do a tour of the cabin when we first came and saw it for the home inspection a year ago. I will link that video for you guys here if you missed it, but some of you have asked for a more updated tour and it does look very different since a year ago because we had it painted inside and it's just kind of been cleaned up from what the seller had in here before. But with that being said, I'll turn the camera around and I'll give you a tour of our little cabin. All right, so as soon as you come in the front door, this is what you got. This cute little boy laying on a couch. Pete, say hey. Hey. <laughs> so this is the living room. Then we've got our wood burning stove and everything over here in this corner. And then this just flows right into the kitchen. Up here is a really big loft. That's Parker's bedroom. I'll take you guys up there in just a second. So here's our little kitchen. Got a view out the kitchen window to the driveway. There's a lot of natural lighting in this cabin, which I really love. Windows all over the place. So this space under the stairs, for now, is where we're gonna be putting our stackable washer and dryer. We've already bought it, we measured it, made sure it's gonna fit in there. And I'm probably gonna put up just a simple curtain or something, but that's where our washer and dryer is gonna go. And here's the master bedroom with all of our suitcases. <laughs> and this is where we are going to be putting a door eventually to that addition that I was telling you guys about earlier. So you'll come through the kitchen, through the bedroom, out this door, and then we're going to probably have an addition with a laundry room and a pantry area where I can store my pressure canner, like dehydrator, all those big kitchen appliances. As of right now, I don't have any room for that stuff in the cabin. So having that addition would be really nice.
And here we've got a bathroom. Definitely gonna have to get a new sink because this thing, what is that? It just takes up so much room. So we're gonna get a new vanity at some point, but on-demand hot water heater, which is awesome. And just a simple stand-up shower, nothing crazy. So it's just a one bath. We just bought this mirror the other day because there was no mirror in here. Just something temporary for now. I like the doors. The doors in here are like solid wood. I've had a lot of comments, not just on YouTube, but you know, people that we know that are like, are you crazy going to like 600 square feet? That's a tiny cabin and oh my gosh, just one bathroom. Are you guys gonna be able to live with that? And the thing is, you guys, it's just me, Joe, and Parker. And we have had big houses. Like we had a house that was like 26, 2700 square feet. And it was too much house. We had all these rooms that we didn't even use. And not only are we cleaning spaces that we don't use, we're paying property taxes on something that we really don't need. So honestly, this little cabin has everything that we need. And being out here in Alaska, we plan on being out and about hunting, fishing, and exploring, and foraging, and just doing so much outdoors on the homestead that, you know, it's not we're not like we're gonna just be stuck in this cabin. And even in the winter time, yeah, sure, we'll be inside more, but we have our own room, Parker has his own space, and we have a bathroom and a kitchen. Like, what else, what else do we need, you know? So it's perfect. All right, let me take you guys up and show you Parker's little area. Now, we are about to clean his loft because it has not been cleaned yet, so it is a hot mess right now. The cellars left bunk beds up there. They just left everything. Like, I don't even think they came back after we closed on the property. Like, all the stuff they had here was still here. So we need to clean that out, sweep it, mop it, and get it ready. That way, when we get here in two months, we can just move little Parker's stuff right in. There's a lot of things I said on a previous video that we have to finish. We're gonna be doing different flooring. We don't like this color at all, and it's starting to split and separate in many different areas. Gotta finish the molding. Gotta finish the stairs. Quite a few things we gotta do. And thus is mom life, picking up dirty clothes along the way. <laughs> Parker's been fishing for his little lizards off the banister. So you come in and this is gonna be Parker's room. We need to get rid of all of this stuff. We have a bed for him already. We don't need this old bunk bed that they left. I mean, they left their bedding. I think that's a cot. We might keep that, um, an air mattress, just all kinds of stuff, but we don't need all this furniture in here. It's a bunk bed set that they had taken apart. Parker, you're, Sorry. yeah. I'm like, did you just, me. did you just dump your suitcase out on the floor? Oh, you got high up right there. <laughs> my books dad did that. So anyway, this is gonna be Parker's room, but Parker has the best view from his bedroom up here. He can see right out to the pond. Super cute. It's amazing how the paint lightened up the cabin. They had forest green and bark brown paint in this cabin when we bought it. And it was so dark. So we hired some friends to come in and they painted it all just a neutral color. We might do something different later with some tongue and groove planking to make it look more cabiny inside. But for now, it's painted one color and I can live with that. So that's pretty much it for the cabin. Not much to it. Parker's fishing, so that's what that line is. But the refrigerator usually goes here. Right now we have it out on the front deck so that it stays cold because we are just living off the generator right now and so we don't have that on like 24 hours but the fridge will go here. And then my thought is having all this space open would be nice so I can fit a kitchen table over there. And I don't want a kitchen table right next to the wood burning stove. That, that thing gets really hot and that would not be comfortable. So that'll be a little bit of a project, but that's the plan. We're gonna be moving that wood burning stove to the other side of the living room. And then that's the view from the front deck.
So we searched for a cabin here in Alaska for about two years and <laughs> the options that we had in our price range because our goal was for when Joe retires not to have to go get another job. So the budget that we had to stay within um, was just that, a budget that we could maintain and we were actually able to purchase this property in cash because we sold our house in Virginia and we made, we made enough money off the sale of that home to be able to buy this outright. But we wouldn't have been able to do that if we were looking for some big mansion in Alaska. And trust me, there are some beautiful log cabin homes, waterfront property, all the things. But our goal was freedom. And our goal was not to have to work for somebody and get up with an alarm clock every day. Our goal was to live free and not have to answer to anyone and do whatever we wanted to do every day on our homestead. So we kind of had to drop our standards a little bit so that we could maintain that whole idea. Some of the cabins that we came across were less than desirable. And I mean, falling apart, major issues with the foundation, with the roof, like they just didn't have that appealing look to them. And when I came across this property, I told my realtor to put an offer in on it sight unseen. And I told him, put the offer in and then go out there and FaceTime me and do a FaceTime walkthrough because this one's not gonna last. All the ones that were halfway decent were gone like that. And I'm like, make an offer, get out there ASAP, FaceTime us. So he did. And when he FaceTimed us, we were like, oh yeah, we want it, we want it. Like we knew that this is what we wanted. I wanted a small cabin, one that didn't look like a dump, and I wanted a view. I didn't care if it was a view of the Alaska mountains or a lake or a pond. I just wanted something to look at because to me, how do you move to Alaska and not have a view of something beautiful, right? I didn't wanna just be surrounded by trees and woods. And we always wanted something that had some type of water on it, even if it was just a pond or something. So this property really just checked all the boxes for us. We came up here last year for the home inspection for a couple days. We got to come out to the property for a few hours during the inspection and we were just so happy with this property. The seller built this back in 2014. He did have a well put in and he did have a septic system put in. So even though it's off grid, it is not connected to city power, it runs off the generator and all of those things function with the generator. We are, however, gonna be doing solar. I don't have any desire to live off of a generator. Um, we may need to use that sometimes as a backup, but for 24 seven, I don't wanna live on a generator. So this Frisian style cabin is adorable. Like the bones of it are adorable. The layout is adorable and there's so many ideas that I have for decor, but as far as the cabin itself, the bones are great, the molding is beautiful, the windows, I mean, it's just, you could really move in here and do nothing and it would be just fine. So in a way, I feel like we got really lucky and I'm super happy that we didn't think twice and we just put the offer in and snagged it up and we offered the seller cash. Like we didn't haggle with him, um, we did negotiate on the price a little bit because the well he had was too shallow and so he dropped the price a little bit so we could afford to put in a deeper well, which we did last fall. Um, but yeah, it's super cute. Ooh. I get so nervous with things like this because not that I don't trust Joe and I don't think that Joe knows what he's doing, but we are so far out, you guys. If there was an emergency, it would be a haul to get him into a hospital, so. Towards the house?
have wild rose hips all over the property. These are so yummy. You can make rose hip jelly, you can make skincare products. They're everywhere. big one. Whoa. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh. It sounded like a dinosaur. It's funny because I have had a lot of people I say a lot of people, it's been a few crazy people. Leave some comments on like our greenhouse build videos and our hoop house build videos and they're like, oh yeah, sure you say it was easy to build it because you didn't do anything, you just sat there. Joe did all the work. Like, I have people telling me this and of course I get offended. I'm like, <laughs> didn't you see me carrying lumber and staining and holding things for Joe and lifting while he screws things in and I'm like, okay. But it's so funny because I'm like, you don't see what goes on behind the scenes and and someone has to hold the camera when we're filming a video i am the one filming 98 percent of the time because if i give the camera to parker or joe to film something it's like this <laughs> so i'm the one filming and i can't film and hammer and do things at the same time right unless i've got my tripod stand but it's so funny i just had someone i was sitting here watching joe chop down the trees or saw down the trees and i was thinking someone's gonna be like oh were you just sitting there drinking a glass of wine well actually yes i am because we have one chainsaw right now since we're just up here for a quick trip am i just supposed to go down there and like help him hold the chainsaw like i can do nothing right now once the trees are down and we saw them up, I can help bring them up. Like, I can do all that. But right now, Joe's in his zone. But it's just so funny. People are like, oh, Joe's doing all the work. And it's like, they don't see what goes on behind the scenes when the camera's off. I just think it's so funny. We pretty much still have, from our solar pole right here, over to clear and most of that as you can see is dead anyway so it needs to go joe you're doing a great job honey yeah, yeah? you doing okay what? out of gas, out of gas. <laughs> joe you're soaking wet yeah. are you cold or warm or yeah, backache. backache there it goes there it goes joe Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh, that was huge. Look at that, how much more open it is. That's amazing. So we're gonna take the rest of this brush down and these little trees down here so we can open up the clearing. That way in the winter time with the snow machines, Parker can just have a whole playland out there to play on. Look, I understand for all of the people out there that are like the safety inspectors Joe should have on a hard hat, earplugs, and some safety goggles. Here's the thing. In America, we have this thing called freedom. Freedom to choose. Well, for most things, right? Joe knows what he's supposed to wear and he chooses not to. He, I can sometimes get him to put earplugs in if he's shooting his gun and stuff like target practice, but y'all, it's his life and it's just, just how Joe is. He doesn't wear all, all the things. So please, 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 please don't leave a bunch of comments about how Joe should be wearing a helmet and Joe should be wearing goggles. He is well aware. Trust me, he is well aware. <laughs> Parker's down there slaying the zombies with his sword. Which is really a paint stirring stick that he found. <laughs> Did you get the zombies? Be careful, you're in a zombie graveyard, P. Wow, he 
he cleared a lot of trees. Oh, there goes another one. Not only that, it's really nice when the clearing is opened up like that because we get moose down here, beautiful Alaskan species of birds that love the pond. So the more open it is, the more opportunity we have to sit up on the deck and look at the beautiful wildlife out here. Oh man. Oh my gosh. I hate these ones that get stuck like that. Now it's hanging. Yeah. did not fall in the direction that it looked like it was going to fall in. <laughs> you okay, Bubby? Yeah. Woo. Like, I don't know if it could have reached all the way up here, P, but that scared Mama. Yeah. I know. Look at all these fallen trees. So gotta take all these dead ones down. and maybe I can rub his back down with some oil or something because one thing about Joe, he is a work horse. If you don't stop him, he will just keep on going. So it's time for him to come in, take a hot shower, eat a good meal <laughs> and relax because he did a lot today. Wow, the clearing is so big now. And there's the man himself, utterly exhausted. You turning the generator on? Yep. He's like, it is time for a hot shower. Amazing, Alaska. This is how soaking wet Joe got, cutting down all those trees. His money in his pocket <laughs> is drenched. So I have it sitting by the wood burning stove to dry out. Look at his pants, completely drenched. Today's the day. Are you going to catch us a salmon? I think so. You think so? Maybe are, two. Are you excited? Yeah. How All many right. salmon do I get to catch? As many as you want. Unlimited. Look at that blue water from the glacier runoff. How beautiful is that? Beautiful. Got mountains out here. Oh my goodness. So pretty. All right, so we're back at it again, trying to catch fish. We'll see how today goes. <laughs> we are bound and determined, even if little Parker catches one, that's all I care about. I really want him to get to experience this before we leave Alaska. Good cast, P. Woo! Good cast, P.
bike. You do? Did you lose it? Well, it's starting to rain again. We've had no luck yet. <laughs> How's it going, P? Mm, not too good. Not too good? Nothing not yet, good. huh? Not, not, not. He's determined. <laughs> Bound. bound and determined. He said he is bound and determined, but it is getting colder and it's raining harder. I don't mind the, the misty drizzle, but it's starting to really come down. Well, we did our best friends, but no fish. <laughs> Such is life, right? I guess that's why they call it fishing. Poor little Parker, he sure did try, but I don't know. I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know if it's the bait we're using. I don't know. But like I told Parker, either way, we still had fun. Didn't we, Parker? <sighs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have a little hike back. I think we are going to head up to an area that they say is good for blueberry picking. And August is one of the best months for picking berries, so why not? We're already out this way, so we're gonna stop in and see if we can get some. Just something fun to do, and we promised Parker that if he was a big boy and helped us with the wood stacking and stuff yesterday, that we would stop and get ice cream. So since we're out this way, I think we're gonna do that too. Did you see that? Oh my gosh, I freaking wish I caught that on camera. These two squirrels were fighting and they fell and he fell like 10 feet and caught himself on that branch. Oh my gosh. Oh. He's mad. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we have the generator on right now. Hopefully it's not too loud in the background. But I was gonna show you guys this uh, solar mount and how good of a job Joe did. Let's see if I can not break my neck here. Oh gosh, I don't even have to go that far, hold on. There's the solar pole where all of our panels will be mounted. When we got out here this week, the trees were completely blocking it. And now it's just totally open to the sun. So he did a fantastic job yesterday. Four straight hours of cutting down trees and I finally got him to come in and take a hot shower and he passed out like a little baby. Such a hard worker, the husband of mine. <laughs> so no luck fishing today, no luck blueberry picking. <laughs> We went all the way up to the flat grounds where they were supposed to be and we didn't find any blueberry bushes. So we figured that was a sign that we were just supposed to come home and chill out for the evening. We're about to make dinner. Tomorrow is our last full day here at the cabin. Yeah. I don't know if it looks so good or if I'm just like really, really hungry, but dang, well this hot. Mmm, that's oh, good. So we just got done eating dinner and I just came out on the porch. It's just nice to come out here and look at the view. I'm feeling a little emotional because I know that our stay here this week is coming to an end. Um, I wish we didn't have to go back to Virginia. <laughs> I know that we have to for two more months until Joe can start his terminal leave with the military and then we can come up here for good. But it's just like, Joe and I were talking about it and we're so grateful that we got to come up here for this week to just assess the property, assess the cabin and kind of get, you know, get our bearings on what we're walking into because last year when we bought the property we only got to see it for a couple of hours so this was a really good visit just to learn the area um, and get a feel for our new homestead before we get up here this was a great idea to come up for this week but I'm feeling emotional and I don't want to go back you know coming to a state where you know I, I feel like no state is perfect, right? When we look at our culture and the things, you guys all know what I'm talking about, so I won't even go into all that craziness right now, but the, the world is on fire. Our country is on fire. We have a bunch of idiots running it, and it's, it's terrifying, the thought of raising up our children in this society. So no state is perfect, but moving to a state that is more in line with our values and principles feels very reassuring. You guys, when you drive around here, when you go through Alaska, everybody has American flags on their porch. You see signs on people's driveways. No trespassing. We don't call 911. Like, that is my kind of people. You know what I'm saying? Like, common sense is common sense. What's mine is mine. Don't cross me. Don't trespass. Like, no. So, just being in a place like this where there's like-minded people, surrounding us it just feels so reassuring and so welcoming I, I feel like there's still normalcy in the world there are still good people and obviously there are good people in every state but you know I've had people tell me like what are you gonna do just keep moving to moving from state to state to state until you find a state that's more you know red a state that's more conservative yeah if that's what it takes if that's what it takes to protect me and my family, my son, our right to homeschool, our right to bear arms, all the things, then absolutely I would move around a million times if that's what it took. But right now the state of Alaska has everything that we need and I really feel like God has called us to this place and I think that's why he made everything work out the way that he did for us to get this property. And it's just, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet to leave it. 
in a day and a half, but we'll be back. We'll be back very soon. And then we gonna make some things happen around here. I'm so excited about my new chicken coop. I'm so excited about my greenhouse that's going over there. And I'm just so excited about all of it. I just can't wait. A couple hours from Japan, would you stay awake? I'm losing touch of who I am when you're far away. And I feel like I'm running in circles around you. Acting strange for a while But I want you close Hey guys, good morning. So it is our last full day here at the cabin and we've decided that we are gonna hike around. We have several lakes that are super close to the cabin. So we're gonna take little Parker and <laughs> as a last ditch effort, see if there's any fish going on out there. Go check them out if we can get to them. And then also we're gonna hike the property today and try to go around to the other side of the pond, which is an area that we haven't been to yet. to close. Alright, we've hiked down to this adorable little lake in the middle of nowhere. We found a little trail that kind of leads down to the water so we're gonna throw our poles in and do some fishing oh it's so peaceful that's a good cast buddy So this lake is right next to our cabin. I mean, it's basically down a dirt road, little hike up and through the mountains, super close to the cabin. We spent the last two days driving around Alaska, finding lakes and rivers, and there's lakes right here. Hold on, look at how cute they are. Though. That looks like maybe baby trout. Mm-hmm. So quiet. Baby trout or baby pike? They look so real in the water. Mm-hmm. All right, another day fishing and another day with no fish. <laughs> I will say though, Parker did catch a little trout. Poor little guy was so excited. He got it in so far that we were able to see the fish and then he lost it. So, oh, it is what it is. We had fun and it was a beautiful day today. It rained a little bit earlier, but it's been clear and actually pretty warm the rest of the day. So I think it's time to pack it up and grab something to eat. <laughs> look how cute he is. What kind of frog is that? Daddy, look at the frog. It's like a moose coming up here. 
Really? That's a blueberry, Joe. <laughs> That's blueberry. I don't know if we should eat that Here. one. Come on. Alright, open your hands, Pete. Let Dad way. give you his. <laughs> mm. nope. oh, where'd it go? We hiked all over <laughs> to find blueberries, and we come home today and we hike our own property, and we have a million blueberry bushes out there. I mean, they are just all over the flats, all along the tree line. Blueberry pie, blueberry jam, blueberry syrup. Yes, blueberries. Where is the line between dreaming and feeling blue? It's four o'clock in the evening. I haven't left my room. But the truth is, if I'm honest, I feel stuck here in the middle. Am I one of those crazy people? Should I stay? Change is gonna find 